now with a captain on our side. We keep in constant contact with him. Only using cash to purchase burner phones. It's basically a phone you can buy almost anywhere with no name attached to it. It's completely anonymous. Ensuring our phones won't be wiretapped or traced back to any of us. Being careful to switch phones once a week. The trio, we call ourselves, are at an outdoor range practicing our precision and accuracy. Facing Jordan, a gravely voice is spoken. Give me that rifle, you weak bitch. Laughing my ass off, I watch as our newfound friend hits bullseye, three shots strong. Hundreds of rounds later, we pack up our gear and begin cleaning each weapon slowly and methodically, remembering to wipe down all the moving metal parts. Jordan opens, disengages and closes the slide rack of all the guns. Weapons check, clear and safe. Let's ride. Loaded up in the Highlander, we're cruising at 40 miles an hour. The uh, big man, we affectionately call him, Captain, points to a location. We pull in. I want some burritos. Price is half off after 4 p.m. After gaining weight with every ounce we consume, enjoying happy hour, knocking back several brewskis, the three of us leave and I drop them both off at their respective flats. At home now, blowing off steam, killing hookers, <laughs> playing GTA 5. It's the following day, I'm half awake. One of the throwaway phones rings out loud. Captain, do you have any info on the Johnson case? I ask, frustrated. Tanel Johnson was supposed to have committed many horrifically violent crimes and murders, but was never convicted, years ago due to witnesses uh, mysteriously disappearing. Now a free man, able to kill and rape again. You wouldn't believe it. The defense attorney got him off on a technicality. This son of a bitch raped, robbed and burned three women while they were still alive. Now he walks free because the arresting officer didn't read him his rights, the captain explains. So... This means he's all ours, right, Cap? Asking permission. You bet your ass he is. I want in on this one. This bastard has slipped through the cracks for years. I've been wanting to nail him down to a cross my own damn self. Right, I'll send over all his info. Thanks, kid. The captain says with a growly voice. Parked across the street from the courthouse. Jordan and I watch as this garbage of a human walks out with a smile and all-around smugness about him. Moving with a strut, believing he will actually be a free man. Reaching the sidewalk, a black Cadillac appears, blaring loud rap music, smoke coming from all the windows. The man enters the car. Jordan, write down that plate number and send it to the captain, I urge. We begin following the car to the other side of town, to a modest home with people and cars parked everywhere up and down the street. Smoke and alcohol flood the area. Great. Looks like a party. No, not tonight, Jordan. Oh, come on, man. We can take him, he says excitedly, holding his weapon, spinning the silencer counterclockwise onto his weapon. No, there's too many of them. Besides, we're only after Johnson. Another time. Disappointed, he disengages the safety of the weapon back to the on position. Driving off to take a break while calling our contact, telling him there's drugs and illegal guns everywhere, hoping he can draw out this dead man. You did good, boys. That location is a known trap house. I'll set up a SWAT raid tonight. Surprise, surprise, assholes. <laughs> you watch Johnson. And see if he leaves first, he orders. Back at the killer's neighborhood, we wait a block away, munching on snacks and burgers, using binoculars to see all the foot traffic in and out of the house. Hours pass as we take turns. Ah, there he is! Jordan shouts while hitting my arm. Quickly, I sit up, looking out the window starting the car, waiting for him to leave. 
His vehicle blows past us, trash and dirt flying through the air as he speeds away. With our associate in the area, Jordan calls and updates our position as we tail our mark. Heading east on 22nd Street towards Broadway, he says. Got it. I'm in a marked unit en route. I'll pull him over once located. Several minutes pass. Okay, I'm right behind you boys. My turn. Sirens are loud with the lights flashing. Pulling over the vehicle, we wait a few cars back, just in case there's a resistance or struggle. Turning off his dash cam of the cruiser. He approaches the vehicle. Oh, good evening, Mr. Johnson. Could you step out of the car, please? The captain insists. What's the problem, officer? Was I speeding? This retarded criminal asks. We have reason to believe there might be guns or drugs in the car. Step out so I can check. I'll just put you in cuffs until I finish searching the car. The man refuses so he gets hit with a taser and becomes incapacitated. The captain opens the driver's door and yanks him out, cuffing the man and walking him back to the squad car. I exit my car and grab my roll of duct tape, walking towards them both. Who the hell are you, homie? He asks, pissed off. I am retribution. Covering his mouth with a whole hell of a lot of tape after striking him over the head, knocking him unconscious and throwing his useless ass in the back seat. Sitting next to the captain in the front now, with Jordan following behind. Hey, where are we going now? He asks with a smile. Oh, don't worry. I know a good place. He nods. Driving for approximately 45 minutes, we're in the middle of the woods. This area looks awfully familiar. I noticed many of the same fallen trees from before. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, isn't this where all those girls were kept and held hostage? It was all over the news, right? I ask, while knowing damn well the answer. Yes, forensics is all done here. They won't be back. Turning off the squad car, hearing muffled cries from the back seat. Just then, he throws his door open, yelling while taking out three photos from a manila envelope, showing each one to the suspect in the back. Hey, remember these girls? They were young and innocent, and you took that away from them. They didn't deserve to be raped and burned alive, you sick, sadistic psychopath. The captain yells, then Jordan grabs the man, removing the tape from his mouth. Screw you and those girls. I'll do the same to your daughter when I'm free, you weak-ass cop, the man says. Looking back at me, the captain sees the array of knives I now hold in a silk cloth. He grabs one while yelling. You'll never hurt anyone again. Pushing the man forward, he forces him to walk into the building with no windows. Our flashlights brighten the room. Laying plastic on the ground, setting up the kill site to catch all the blood. The mark showing absolute emptiness in his heart and no emotion. His face is blank. No remorse. The captain looks at him and says, hmm, Hope you said your prayers, son. And begins stabbing him multiple times in the stomach. Then slices his carotid artery. He falls to the ground, still yelling with rage. He stomps on the man's head until his skull caves in. Blood and brain matter now everywhere, painted on the floorboard. Taking out the saw knife, cutting the deceased man's limbs and head for the disposal. Using heavy duty trash bags, gathering all the parts. I repeat the same steps as last time. Keeping the kill site clean. Carefully covering our tracks and cleaning up the mess. I take a break. Studying our associate. Now getting a grip and watching me. Finally calm down, the captain says. Damn, you sure know what you're doing. Looks like you've done this before. Oh, damn, I have to go. The raid is supposed to be starting at the trap house. See you boys again, soon. Wondering how he felt about killing, 
and if he could hold it together. We begin to discuss if there's any way we can trust him not to go mad like that again. <sighs> He's a loose cannon man. Next time we have to walk him through the process, or he can't join us. In agreement, I nod. And look, he just got caught up in the moment. It happens. I'm just glad we're out here. Throwing each garbage bag in the trunk. Now let's get rid of this asshole. Saying while laughing. Driving for a short while, we decide on a good spot to dump the bags after filling them with heavy rocks and taping them closed. Rapidly tossing bags in the water, Jordan notices someone in the distance. Damn it, look. There's a man over there. He's looking right at us. It's dark. He couldn't have seen anything, right? Tires screeching. Dirt and small rocks flying from the tires of the all-wheel drive vehicle. Engine revving. We speed out of the area. Dude, who the hell was that? Why was he out here? Jordan asks, totally freaked out. Calm down. He didn't see anything. Besides, the bag sank to the bottom. We're in the clear, I assure him. The headlights brightly illuminate our path many yards ahead of us. Woods are quiet. So quiet indeed, we can hear our hearts beating rapidly. Suddenly a deer appears in front of us. Slamming on my brakes, the SUV attempts to slow down, although unable to do so on the dirt roads covered in small rocks. Unfortunately, not being able to come to a full stop in time and still hitting the poor creature. Exiting the vehicle, Jordan and I assess the damage and look over this poor white-tailed beast which lies there motionless. Is it dead? Jordan cries out. Examining the deer, I notice it's approximately 80 pounds with little to no wounds. Its fur a light brown color with touches of white over its coat. It's still breathing, yet with slow, labored breaths. It appears to be unconscious, but still alive. You might be surprised, but we are actually animal lovers. Jordan, get over here and help me with it. We'll hold on to him until he regains consciousness. I beckon him over. Carefully, we lift the deer's limp body and move it into the cargo area of my vehicle, using duct tape to tie its arms and legs together, his mouth as well, ensuring it can still breathe. <laughs> I don't know if they bite, but I sure as hell don't want to find out. Wouldn't want this soft-bodied beast to wake up in a rage and go apeshit on us. We load him up, shut the back hatch and continue to leave the woods. About ten minutes later, Jordan and I are discussing our next move and targets when he hears a commotion behind us. The deer awakens in a daze. Slowly he begins to move his head side to side, scanning his new surroundings. I pull over and we reach the rear of the SUV, opening the hatch. The beast is now flailing violently. We're picking up and Jordan grabs a knife. He removes the tape from the deer's mouth and limbs. Letting it go free, the beast gets up quickly and scurries off back into its natural habitat. Back on the road again, satisfied with our latest kill. I'm tired now, seeing how I did all the work dismembering the body and cleaning up the kill site, as they watched and learned my techniques, covering our tracks, so to speak. Jordan sits beside me, wired and ready to celebrate. He turns on loud heavy metal music, grabbing his favorite drink, adjusting his chair back, relaxing, and listens. After about seven minutes, I look over to see this numb nuts playing air drums. Settle down, Jordan. We'll be home soon, I urge him. He stops and veers in my direction. Screw that, man. Let's go get some drinks, and from now on, you call me J-Money, okay? <laughs> he says that while smiling. What about your restaurant? You have an arcade and pool tables, right? It's only about a ten minute drive, I inquire. Jordan laughs. <laughs> Hell no, we're not going there. That place has rats, dude. I begin choking on my cold drink. <laughs> what the hell, Jay? Are you serious? Man, that's disgusting. Okay then, where to? Guide us, oh great one. 
Mocking him, I bow while saying it. He begins giving directions as we near our destination. Yeah, yeah, just keep your eyes on the road, you crazy bastard. Yeah, I know a good place we can scout our next kill and have a few drinks. Turn left on St. James Street. It's a club called Legends. A lot of scumbags frequent that place. I grin and say, Oh yeah, you would know, you know ball having turtle dick. We arrive promptly. I stuff my Beretta into its concealed carry holster. Hey, they serve beer inside. You can't carry here. It's, that's illegal, bro, he says quietly. Disarming myself and hiding our weapons in our log vehicle, heading towards the entrance, the bouncer begins to conduct a search. Welcome to Legends, fools. Arms up, the bouncer says aggressively. Jordan looks at me frustrated. He has a short fuse, and I know that look. No, not him, not here, I whisper to him. Besides, we must be absolutely certain our kills are justified, and our marks are well vetted. We pay the admission fee, heading to the bar while looking around at the local talent, all the while scoping out the area for our next lucky contestant on You're About to Get Murdered game show. Lights flashing, loud music blaring. Dozens of young men and women are dancing and drinking. After mingling for a while, Jordan comes over and stands beside me. He begins to inform me that he learned a shock collar for a local gang is here up on the balcony in the VIP area. In prison, a shock collar is the leader of a gang who issues orders from prison to be committed on the streets, such as drug deals, gun trafficking, tax collections on drug money, beatdowns of fellow gang members, and even the murders of rival gangbangers, if necessary. These same rules apply to a mafia don as well. Do you have his name? I ask, while finishing my drink. Yeah, his street name is Lil Boy. I'll text the captain and see if he can run his alias in the system. Jordan begins smiling, anticipating the kill. Little Boy? That guy has to be at least six foot six and weighs over 300 pounds. Okay, you keep an eye on Bigfoot. I have to drain the dragon, I say. Making my way to the restroom, I receive a phone call from the captain on a burner phone. Hey boss, how'd the raid go? I ask while relieving myself. Mm, not good. The judge wouldn't sign off on it. Couldn't even get a search warrant. He says, clearly upset. Okay, well, don't worry about them for now. Jordan and I will keep an eye out for those guys. In the meantime, do you think you could do us a favor and run a name? Hearing rustling in the background over the phone. Yeah, it's his street name, Little Boy. Holding the phone close, I speak quietly. What? You mean Juan Cortez? I've been building a case over that puto for years, but we can never link any murders to him. We just can't seem to find a prosecutor who will try him or even look at the evidence. Yeah, it's so damn hard to get convictions in this jurisdiction with all the politics and their bullshit. I have everything there is to know about that asshole and his acolytes. He is pure scum of the earth, this one. They use a killing method of machetes. They are real savages who love their violence up close and personal. Their M.O. is to cut out the eyes and tongues of their victims after they're beheaded. I know for a fact he's already killed at least six women, and is suspected of being behind many more, he explains. Thanks, Captain. I'll talk to Jordan. For sure this son of a bitch is next on our list. Send me all the info you have on him. Talk to you later. I hang up and exit the restroom. I begin walking towards where I last saw Jordan to tell him the good news when I'm approached by this young, beautiful brunette woman standing about five foot nine inches, wearing a quite revealing blue dress and high heels. Looking down at my phone, I notice a new text message from Jordan. It reads, Nice job, man. Who is she? I'm out of here. See you later. Hey, handsome. I've been watching you from the other side of the club. 
Did you even notice me? She smiles while asking. Oh, sorry. I'm here with a friend. I guess we just got carried away in a conversation. He's right over... I stutter nervously as I begin to point to an empty bar stool. Damn, that son of a bitch, did he leave me? <laughs> That's okay. How about we chat for a few? And if you need a ride, I can take you... <clears throat> she says with an inviting, soft voice. Reaching in my pockets for my keys, realizing they're now gone. Oh, that mother... <laughs> Did Jordan put you up to this? I ask in anger. What? No. I just saw you across the way and you looked interesting, so I wanted to talk to you. She explained. Damn, I'm sorry. My name's Frank Castle. I've just been under a lot of stress from work lately. It's been a long week, I exclaim. Her right arm reaches out and extends forward to shake mine. <laughs> That's okay. Nice to meet you, Frank. I'm Miranda Jones. So, what do you do for work? She inquires. With a big grin on my face, I respond, laughing inside. Oh, me? I'm in the medical field. A transporter. I deliver and dispose of medical waste efficiently and quickly, I inform her. Thinking for a minute, her finely plucked eyebrows raise and her dimples crinkle in her adorable cheeks. Her face is now lit up with a beautiful smile. Wow, that's really interesting. It sounds intense. You're not killing people and harvesting their organs, are you? She says while laughing and nudging me. We continue for about an hour. I really like this girl. She offers me a ride home. I accept, of course. I mean... I'm a guy, she's hot. We head to my place and arrive there after about 15 minutes of driving. Sliding a paper across the center compartment with my number on it, I speak confidently. This is me right here. Well, it was great to meet you. She looks over at me, as if she's thinking of what to say next. Hey, um, I have to use the restroom. Do you mind if I come up? She asks, looking all cute. <laughs> sure, no problem. Give me a minute to clean up. Hey, wait here a second, okay? I ask, politely. I run upstairs to my apartment. Shit, my keys. I swear I'm going to kick his ass tomorrow. Fortunately, I leave a spare key above the front door, hidden behind a loose brick in the wall. Again, yeah, screw you. <laughs> Don't judge me. I grab the key and let myself in. I didn't need to really clean up. That was a lie. I began locking up all my gun cleaning supplies, weapons and killing tools in a large gun safe I bought recently. Now, with everything out of sight, I poke my head outside, motioning for her to come up. She gets out of her car and walks up the stairs slowly, ensuring she doesn't slip and fall in those high heels. I reach out and take her hand as she nears the top step. Come on in. Bathroom's the last room on the left. I say while pointing, as if she doesn't know where left is. Well, it's the next morning, and I find myself disoriented, but feeling good. I've been looking around, noticing clothes all over the floor. That isn't my stuff. Arising from my bed and springing up to investigate, walking from my bedroom to the bathroom, I notice someone in the kitchen. Who the hell are... I'm interrupted. There she stands with nothing but my t-shirt and shorts. Oh, hey Frank. Just making us breakfast. Hope you like omelettes. I also made bacon and toast, she says while smiling. Taking in what the hell just happened, I ask quizzically. I, um, sorry, I, I don't remember much from last night. It's kind of a blur. Are you Jordan's girlfriend? She stops cooking and turns around. <laughs> no, silly. I'm yours. Well, not officially. I suppose that's up to you, isn't it? Now, I'm more confused than Father's Day in West Virginia, I reply. Is it? Oh, I'll be right back, I utter. What the hell just happened? I make my way into the restroom, emptying the seemingly endless water hose 
thinking to myself how dumb I am. I have this smoking hot chick in my kitchen, damn near half naked, cooking me breakfast, and I got nothing. A voice speaks inside me. Thomas, my actual name, get your dumb ass in there and talk to the girl. I arrive back in the kitchen, now dressed, and sit at the table. <laughs> Thank you so much for breakfast. I don't remember buying all this food, I say while chomping down on my bountiful feast. Oh, it's no trouble. You were sleeping soundly, so I didn't want to wake you. I went to the store and picked up a few things for you. Hope you enjoy it. I look up into her angelic hazel eyes and say, You didn't secretly buy yourself a toothbrush and put it in my medicine cabinet, did you? <laughs> she laughs and then begins to look deep into my eyes. It's weird. It's as if we've known each other for years and I've just met this girl. Yeah, it's all really... I stutter over my words. It's great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I struggle speaking. What's wrong? She asks. Oh, sorry, I'm not used to having anyone over. I suppose I'm nervous, because you're just so damn gorgeous. I don't want to mess this up, whatever it is we have. Relax, everything's fine. I'm really enjoying myself with you. I haven't had this good of a time in years. I do, however, have to get to work in about an hour. Maybe we can catch up again soon, she asserts. Calmly, she walks over and kisses me on the cheek. She begins to walk away, and I rise up from my chair and pause for a moment. That's it. A kiss on the cheek. I'm such a loser. Fuck this, I thought. Swiftly, I chase after her, slamming the door shut as she begins to open it. Grabbing her and turning Miranda's amazing body around, I begin kissing her like I mean it. See you soon, I say, smiling. She turns around, reaching for the door once more, smiling back at me, and then heads out to her car. Feeling good, and my heart racing, a sudden realization comes over me. What the hell did I just do? I wanted to have a simple life. Hell, it's already getting complicated enough as it is, trying to live this double life. Now I have yet another mask to wear. I'm not sure what I have to do. Maybe catch and release. I know I only just met her, but she's so amazing. The way I felt just in those few moments with her, it was incredible. If I pursue this any further, I may have to give up my current life. Am I willing to give it all up for a woman? This I most certainly have to think about. Well, until next time, I have some homework to do on my new friend. Who is she, really? Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook, come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud, drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so... Come check me out, okay? <laughs>